Hi everyone, it's Barbara and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be sharing some farmhouse DIYs using mostly items from Dollar Tree. So we're going to go ahead and get started on our first project. I found these cute three and a half by five inch wood picture frames from Dollar Tree and I went ahead and picked up four of those. I'm going to remove the tag at the bottom with the tiny little screws and I'm going to do that for all four pieces and I'll set those aside and use those on another DIY. I went ahead and removed the sticker and then the backing and the glass and the picture from inside of the frame, but make sure that you keep the glass because we're gonna be inserting that back into the frame after we do some painting. I went ahead and took some pliers and removed the tabs that were holding the back of the frame in. And it was very simple to do. And like I said, I went ahead and did this for all four frames. Now, I am not going to worry too much about filling these holes in just yet. I want to get a coat of paint on there so that I can reinsert my glasses. I'm going to be painting this with some Waverly white chalk paint, and I only go ahead and put one coat on there. Just really wanted to make sure that I got those grooves so that when I put the glass back in there, it will already be painted and I won't have to paint around that. I went ahead and did that for all four frames, and then you're going to want to make sure that that paint is dry before you reinsert those glass pieces. To secure the glass down, I am using some E6000 and also some hot glue, and I like to put my E6000 on a Q-tip. It just helps me to place it better and not have any seepage or too much glue in one area. I'm going to put that in the corners, and then once I get that E6000 in place, I'll come in with my hot glue and go in between where I put all of the E6000. Try not to mix it together because for some reason, if you mix it, it just doesn't stick as well. Once I have that in place, I'll go ahead and put my glass back in. And you want to press firmly, but not too firm because you don't want to break that glass. The glass is pretty thin. And then I'll do that for all four pieces to reinsert that glass. Now I'm going to assemble these four pieces using the E6000 and some hot glue. And if you haven't guessed yet or not, we are making a lantern. And I love how this lantern turned out. It is so beautiful. Again, I'm just going to put some E6000 in like three places there and then the hot glue in between. And then I'll place this frame up against one of the other frames, making sure that you keep where you inserted your glass to the inside of the lantern that you're making. You wanna make sure that all four pieces on the outside look cohesive and that the insert for the glass is on the inside. And I'll do that for the other frame, attaching it to the first frame that we attached there. So two sides will have just one single picture frame and then two sides will have the edges of the other two. But once we complete this, you won't even be able to tell it. It'll just look really good. Now they're not um, super sturdy at first, but once you put all four pieces together and then the bottom and the top, it is very sturdy. So I go ahead and I apply that top piece. And because I was taking my time and just trying to make sure everything was lined up, I only did one side at a time. That way, when I put my hot glue on there, it wouldn't have set up before I could get that other side lined up and pushed down. So once I get all of that together, I'm gonna to set that to the side, and now I'm gonna start working on the bottom and top of the lantern, and I'm using two of these signs from Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove those metal hangers from the back, and go ahead and remove the stickers as well. What I like to do for my stickers is I like to take my hair dryer and just heat it up a little bit to loosen that glue up, and then usually the stickers will peel right off, one of the signs, the sticker did not want to peel off too well. So if you have that happen, you could just take some sandpaper and sand it down nice and smooth. Then I'll go ahead and remove those inserts that are on the inside. 
and one of them has this nice MDF heart, which is great because Valentine's Day is coming up, so I think I could DIY with that. And I didn't realize that it was in there with a staple, so I just really had to pull hard, and then I realized, oh, there's two little holes there, so there was a staple in there, and it's really easy to remove those staples. You can just use your pliers and pull those out. I'm going to go ahead and set this one to the side and start working on the top piece. So I will be using one of the wood boxes from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the lid. I just need the box itself. And I am going to attach this to the center of one of the signs. And I'm going to be using some wood glue as well as some hot glue. Again, making sure I don't mix those two glues together. And I just go ahead and put that on the middle of each section and then put my hot glue on there. And then I'm just going to set that down right in the center of the sign or try to get it as centered as possible. And then let that hot glue set up. I'm going to be using some of these quart paint sticks. These come from Lowe's for 30 in a pack for a dollar and they were the perfect width for this. I'm just going to mark the edge of the sign on the craft stick and then I'll use my scissors to cut those down. And you always want to make sure that you set it on there and make sure that it lines up and that it is the size you want before you glue anything down. I also took some sandpaper and sanded those ends off to make them nice and smooth. So once you know that it's going to fit and it's the right size, I just use some hot glue right there on the edge of the sign and push the craft stick down. And then I'm going to do that on the opposite side as well. For the two remaining sides, I'm just going to take the craft stick and hold it up and mark it on the edge of the craft sticks that are already on there. Or you can also go by the corner of the wooden box. And I will go ahead and attach those with hot glue and I'm going to do that for the opposite side as well. Once again, making sure that it fits before you glue that down. So if you have any cracks between the wooden box and the craft stick, that's okay because we're going to fill those in and you won't even be able to see it. And then once you get the other side down and glued in place, I am going to be taking some premium spackling and I love this stuff. It dries in like 10 or 15 minutes. I will try to leave a link to that in my description box if you are interested. I'm going to use that to fill in all of these creases and cracks to give it a nice smooth finish. And like I said before, if you have some space there in between your craft stick and your wooden box, you can fill that in with this as well. You could also use some wood putty if you like. I go ahead and do the bottom of the other one because this is the top, so you will be able to see those edges once this lantern is assembled. And I am using that one with a sticker on the top, so you wouldn't be able to see that sticker once we put it down on top of the lantern. You'll let that dry, set it to the side and let it dry. And I also filled in the cracks on the sides of the lantern so that it would have a nice smooth finish. And I will be going over that and touching up that paint once it dries and I sand it down. So I just gently took like 150 grit sandpaper and went over that and made sure that everything was nice and smooth before I did any painting. And I do go in and cover those two holes that were, on the, that were on the bottom of that sign. I didn't notice at first, but I did go in and fill those in as well. I took my Waverly White Chalk Paint and I gave each piece two coats, allowing them to dry in between coats. And I did paint the top and bottom of both of these signs so they're fully covered. Now this piece is going to be the bottom piece and I'm going to set that to the side and I'm going to finish working on the top piece. But I'm just showing you here how I have covered up all of those spackling um, where we sanded it down. So this is how it's going to look once I attach it. But before, well, I'm going to go ahead and attach it with some E6000 and some hot glue. And I'm just going to put that, you know, in the corners there. And then I'm going to go back after I get this set up and we'll be making a handle. So I'm just going to put that in all the little places just so that this E6000 is going to give you that permanent hold 
and the hot glue is just going to hold it in place until that E6000 sets up. And once I get all of that on there, I'm just going to try to center this up on top of the top piece. So now you're looking at the bottom. So we're actually placing the top of the lantern on there. So this is upside down right now. But that it was just easier for me to see how to line it up. You will have some overhang on two sides a little bit more than the other two sides. So now that that's together, I can go ahead and I can create the handle for the lantern. I am using one of these wooden beads and a book ring. Both of these are from Dollar Tree. So the wooden bead came off of one of those signs from the Dollar Tree that had the cute hanger on there. I'm just gonna slide the bead on there and then I will use some hot glue on each side to hold it in place. And you wanna make sure that your glue has set and dried before you paint this because you don't wanna you know, ruin your glue that you have set there. And I'm gonna paint this with some black chalkboard craft paint. I get this paint from Dollar General and it, it provides really good coverage. I only have to paint this one time and I painted the um, entire piece. And then I took that same black craft board paint and a nice clean wet wipey and then I'm just going to dab it into the paint and then take my finger and go over all of the edges and it's gonna give me some nice, pretty lines to distress this lantern. And I do go over every single edge, including the bottom piece, the bottom section of the lantern that we have set to the side. Once I have that all finished up, you do wanna make sure you let that dry before you put your top um, handle on there. So the paint has dried on the handle and this is how I've already gone ahead and done all of those edgings on the bottom. And we're not going to attach the bottom to the lantern. I'm just going to be attaching the handle and I'm gonna use that with some hot glue. And you just wanna put a nice generous amount right there in the center and then just hold the bead in the glue until that glue sets up. So the reason we're not gonna be attaching the bottom of the lantern is you wanna be able I'm going to use an LED light, a battery operated candle, and I recommend you use battery operated, not a real one because there's no airflow in there. And that way you can change the batteries, you can change out your candle, you could put greenery in there, whatever you like. I just absolutely love how this one came out and I hope you do too. It looks so pretty lit up. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I would love for you to click that subscribe button and then the bell notification so you'll be notified the next time I upload a new video. I would also love for you to come visit me on Instagram at Country Lily Decor. Let's go ahead and get started on our second project. I am using this plastic container from Dollar Tree from uh, Christmas and I'm only gonna be using the lid on this. I just loved this design and I had something special in mind for it. I am gonna be using some of these pearl stickers. They come off in strips. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those strips and apply them to the middle of the side of this lid off of this plastic container and I'm going to do that all the way around and they stick really well and when you get to the end there will be a little space so I just cut one of those pearls off and place it right there in that gap to finish it off and then I am going to be using the base of this because we're going to be making a tray and I picked this plastic cup up from Dollar General at the end of the summer and it was actually 50 cent and I loved it because it has that hobnail look. I'm going to give these a coat of paint with my Waverly white chalk paint and I do put on very thin coats so it takes three thin coats and I made sure that I let it dry in between every single coat and that I got around all of those um, little pieces and those pearls because I wanted it to have a nice pretty smooth finish. 
So once again, I, it does take three coats and you, and I did let them dry in between each coat. And I didn't use my heat tool or a hair dryer because sometimes when you use that, the chalk paint will kind of clump up a little bit. So I just let those air dry in between each coat and I just think they turned out gorgeous. So I did, did paint the rim at the bottom there, but I did not paint the inside. And for the lid, I did go ahead and paint the entire piece, top and bottom. And I went ahead and marked the center that has that little um, spot there with my pencil so that I would know how to attach or where to attach my cup to the bottom of this piece. And what's great is it had a center on the cup so I could see clear through there and I would know how to center it up right there on the plate and we wouldn't have to worry about it being off centered. I'm going to attach this using some E6000 and some hot glue. And once I get all that in place, I can just flip my cup over and then set that down right on top of my mark. Now, I do recommend, I'm only going to use mine for decor purposes, but you could put some cupcakes or something cute like that on there. But if you do, I recommend putting a doily on there or some wax paper or something to protect your food from the surface. I think this turned out so adorable. I love this cute little tray. Moving on to project number three, I'm gonna start off with eight of the tumbling tower pieces from Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna glue four of those together to make one piece, so I'll make two sets of four. Once I get those hot glued together, I'm going to attach them to each other just by placing the one set of four on top of the other set of four. So I'm creating a small mini platform. Once I get those together, I am going to um, set those to the side for just a moment. And I'm using two of these wooden crates from Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna use my favorite gray chalk paint. This is Deco Art chalk paint. And I will leave a link to that in my description box if you are interested. I absolutely love this color. I love how it turns out. It's just a very beautiful gray. I'm going to paint all of these pieces with this gray chalk paint, and I do paint the inside of the crates as well, trying to make sure that I get in between all of those slats on the sides and the bottom, and I don't paint the two in uh, two of the ends, like one end on each of the crate, and I'll show you why. But if you miss a couple of spots, and I did miss a couple of spots in between the slats, you can always go back and touch that up. So this only took one coat of paint, and I just love how this turned out. That's why I just love this color. So the reason I didn't paint these two ends is because I'm going to attach them together using some wood glue and some hot glue. And I do put a nice, good, generous amount of that wood glue on there. And once you get that on, you can just push the two ends together, making sure that they line up and that you keep them straight. And then just press really firmly until that hot glue seals. Then I'm going to take the hot glue and attach that little platform with the Jenga blocks or the tumbling tower blocks right in the center of one of the crates. I'm going to take some Waverly White chalk paint and a stiff bristled brush, and I am going to heavily distress this piece, um, the entire thing, including the inside. And see there, you can see where I missed two little sides there on the slat, and I do go back and touch that up with the gray paint. But I wanted this to have a nice farmhouse feel and to look like some really weathered wood. So that's why I'm going very heavy with the distressing. And I will do that on both of the ends, again, as well as the inside, because you will be able to see some of the inside of the crate. Now, you can decorate this however you want, with whatever you want, some greenery, some vases. I am going to be putting some battery-operated candles in there, so I do recommend battery-operated. Here, I'm showing you some regular candles because I didn't have two of the same size battery-operated, but I love the way one sets higher than the other, and it's just super cute. So let me know what you think of this project. Moving on to project number four, I am using two of these glass decanters from Dollar Tree. 
and I am going to go ahead and give those two coats of my Waverly White chalk paint. So chalk paint on glass does not go on like super smooth. You will have some texture. So if you want these to be really, really smooth, then I recommend that you spray paint them. It was not the best weather for me, so I went ahead and opted to use my chalk paint. But if you do spray paint them, make sure you use a paint for glass as well as clean the glass with some alcohol before you do that. So I did go ahead and paint in um, down in the top part because you will be able to see that top rim. And then I'm going to take my black chalkboard paint from Dollar General and another baby wipe. And then I'm just going to go around the rim and it just gives me a nice clean line. You could also use a marker, but since I already had the paint out, I just went ahead and used that. And then I will go back in and do the inside of the rim as well. And I'm going to do that for both of these decanters. And I think they're super cute because I just love this style. So you're going to want to make sure that you let your paint dry. And then I'm going to go in with some of this gingham print ribbon. Now I found this in the sewing section at Hobby Lobby and it was $3.99, but they actually had it on sale and I want to say it was 50% off. So that's a lot of ribbon for $2. I'm just going to hot glue that around the top part of the decanter. And then I'll secure that down with some hot glue on the end. And I'm going to do that for both pieces. And then I will set these to the side and finish this project. So this is like a two-part project. And I just think they are super cute, which I just love this pattern. Now I'm using one of these signs from Dollar Tree. And I thought it would just be super easy to peel these pieces off, these cardboard pieces I have on the top but they really put that on there really, really good. They did not use hot glue, so they used some sort of spray adhesive to put it on there, and I, it just took a long time to get it off. I finally got it off, but it just takes a long time, so I recommend if you want to recreate this to maybe use another sign, or maybe you would like to keep those on there, but I had to use a scraper blade to really get all of that down. And then I had to go back in with some sandpaper and just try to get it as smooth as I could. I mean, it just, I got it. It just took a little bit more effort and it wasn't quite as smooth as um, I thought that it would be, but that's okay. I mean, I'll just give it some texture with the paint. So in my processes of pushing and trying to get all of that off, it did kind of weaken it a little bit right there where the seams are. So I'm going to go back in with some hot glue and put some hot glue on the inside of this sign just to give it some more sturdiness. And you won't be able to see this, so it's no problem. I'm just going, it's probably not necessary, but I just wanted to go ahead because I really did push down on that sign a lot and it kind of weakened it up a little bit. So I'm going to do that around all four sides. And then I'm going to take four of the tumbling tower pieces and I'm going to hot glue one in each corner. And then once I get all of them, I'm just going to push that all the way up into the corner. And once I get all four of those in place, I'm going to take four of the wooden blocks from Dollar Tree. And with the tumbling tower pieces and the wooden blocks, it gave me the perfect height and it brought that wooden block all the way up to the edge of the sign so that I would be able to put some feet. We're creating a riser and I wanted to be able to put some feet on there. So this gave me the perfect height to go right there at the edge of the sign. I'm using some of those wooden beads off of that same sign from Dollar Tree that had the hanger on there. And I'm gluing one on each of those wooden blocks. And I just put a nice good amount of hot glue on there and set the bead in place until that glue sets up. And I just think this is so super cute. Once you get all those beads in place and the glue is set, you just kind of want to make sure you get all of those strands, those glue strands off. I'm going to go in with some Waverly White Chalk Paint again. And I put a lot of paint on there. Since it wasn't perfectly smooth, I was going to go ahead and give it some texture. And 
the way that I can that I do it to give it texture is you put a nice thick coat of chalk paint on there. And I went ahead and did the sides as well. And then before that chalk paint completely dries, I will come in with my hair dryer, or you can use a heat tool, and put that over top of that paint. And while it's still wet, if you're drying it like that, it will crack and it will give you a lot more texture. So you'll see in just a minute, um, once I get all of that painted out, I'll go in while it's still wet and use my hair dryer and it'll just kind of crack and it just gives you like a really nice design. So this was my fix on not being able to get all of those pieces off because I was bound to determine I was gonna use this sign. I did go in and paint the bottom edge of the sign as well as the beads for the feet. And then I'm gonna come in with that same gingham print um, ribbon and I am gonna glue that around the edge of this riser and it was the perfect width. All I did was put some hot glue on the corner and then I will stretch it until it's nice and tight. And then I'll just put some hot glue under there, go back and then push that down with my hand. So if you have very sensitive hands, you'll wanna make sure you have like some finger protectors on. My fingers are pretty tough, so I can just go right over there and push that glue and kind of spread it out so it's not really hardened up and showing through the ribbon. And you'll do that all the way around the riser and then cut that edge off and then glue that little piece down and then this riser will be finished and it is so adorable and it goes very well with the first part of this project which is the decanters and I also wanted to show you that you could put these decanters in those crates and that is super cute you guys if you have a favorite please let me know in the comments down below I would love to know thank you so much for watching please take care and I will see you guys next time